and we're going live now. Good afternoon. Feels like an afternoon. It's been such a busy morning. You'll just have to wait here if it's not working. Good afternoon. I've done it again. Let me give you an option. Here you go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson. We'll be underway in just a minute, just enough time for you to be logging into our system. Don't forget to use our knowledge port code 5... Oh, why don't you tell me, children? 5386687. Excellent, thank you ever so much. Today's lesson is geography. Let's give everyone and me a couple of minutes to make sure everyone's logging properly. Sam tells us we're ready to go. Miss, uh, something I was going to say then. I'm losing it. Miss Bowers, would you mind just checking if the camera's okay for me, please? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Today's lesson is about geography. We are looking at the study of the earth, its locations, physical geography, human geography. And today we're going to continue our work looking at map skills. But before we do, Let's have a quick quiz. You've got just a few more minutes to be studying the map coming up on your screen now. Particularly looking at capital cities. You can see these marks on the map with the big stars. I'm going to zoom in using the zooming tools on your map. If you've got an iPad, it's easy to use the plus minus tools. It's still 100% at the bottom left to zoom in. Can't say which one a map at home can be very useful. You learn an atlas. A good look. Just another 30 more seconds or so. I think your challenge is we've got the same quiz as last week. Can you improve on your time scores? If you were here last week, you might have a clue which some of the capital cities might come up. Take a look at some of the ones in the east for some particularly interesting ones. Hey, let's start with our monster quiz then. Seems good this morning, bit of a fin turn out this morning. Right, 
nice burgers nearly out in front now. Oh, well done, lava slingers. You taking the lead? We've got our first, second, third lava slingers counting crunchers and fire breathers. Let's see how well we've done. There. Capital of France, most of us know that one right, is Paris, capital of Switzerland. Most people say Luxembourg for some reason. Luxembourg is a completely different country. It was last week as well, it still is, it will be next week. <laughs> Just to wonder that one, it's Bern. Capital of Belgium is Brussels, a lot of people get that one right. Germany, lots of people know that's Berlin. Poland, that's a trickier one. These are all cities in Poland. Quite a few people say Prague. Prague is actually the capital city of the Czech Republic. Austria, is a different country entirely. The captain said most people getting it right is Warsaw. <coughs> Capital of Slovakia. Oh no, I'm getting this right. Bratislava. Budapest is the capital of Hungary. Zagreb, capital of Croatia. Vienna, capital of Austria. That's a really tricky one, it seems. Croatia, we just said is Zagreb. Belarus, a lot of people get this right is Minsk. Capital of Italy, most people get this right is Rome. Ukraine, Kiev. So we have the same questions from, from last week, you've got the same questions next week. See if you can improve. The best way to improve on our geography skills is to get a map out and get stood in it. See what you can find out. And speaking of maps, today's skill is to understand map symbols. But I want to know why do we have map symbols? What is the point of having map symbols? Why don't we just, just write everything down on the map? Get ready to explain to me why do we need map symbols? Why have them? See if you can tell me in a shouty tone. Off you go. To look where things are, if you get lost. Yeah, but that's what a map's there for, isn't it? Why do we need symbols on this map? If you get lost, you can look where you are again, but why though, don't we? Why have symbols? To know where things are. But why not just write down on the map where everything is? Why not just write, we see the school, we see the church? Why do we use symbols? Capitals are cities and countries? No, we don't use symbols to show those usually. Well, I suppose we did put a star this time. I'm going to give you a different answer this morning. Okay, we've got lots of similar answers coming up. I'm going to stop you a second. I could get my map and I could write down where everything is on it. I could put this at a school, I could write the word school on the school, I could write the word post box on the post box. I could write uh, this is a hill at 100 metres and 100 metres. I could write, uh, or I could put on uh, this land is for walking on, I could put this land is for riding on, I could put this is, a, this is an A road, I could put this is a motorway. Why do I use symbols instead of that? Why do I use symbols instead of putting off writing on? Answer me that question, please. Someone's telling me. Faster? What do you mean by faster? Explain that one. Takes less time. Why? Takes less time for whom? For a map maker? <coughs> Takes an awful long time to make a map. Take up too much space, as Harry. Save you more space. We do use maps for location. I'm not quite sure what this question I was asking, though. See clearly.
Riley, I'm not quite sure that's what you meant, meant to write there. So let's delete that one. More space on the map, it would take up too much room. If I was to put down every bit of detail on the map, I could do, but it would be absolutely useless. It would be covered in writing. I have no idea what's on it. My friend Steve is going to explain that a little bit clearer. maps come with extraordinary detail, especially the Explorer series, that's 1 to 25,000. So in many cases those are going to be place names that you've got here, but you can't just use those or they fill up the whole map. So instead we've got symbols and some of them look exactly like what they represent. So around here symbols that are marked on the map include things like parking, woodlands, there's even the areas of bracken and this stream that's running alongside us. You can even tell the difference between deciduous and coniferous woodlands. But you don't have to be a mind reader. Every map comes with a legend, that's a key, and that will establish what you're looking at. So to make our maps better to use, for the purpose we're wanting, we use different symbols so that people can quickly understand what's in a place. And we don't put absolutely everything down. We put the things which are most important to the person using the map. If I was making a map of where everyone's fences were, I'd make sure that was the key point. But if I'm making a map for walkers, I want to make sure that anything useful for a walker, like a post office, or a pub, or a playground, I want to make sure those things are on the map instead. If I'm doing a map for uh, people driving a long distance, I want to make sure the roads are my primary function. Remember that word that's used there, legend. That's a special word for a key. So every time you get a map, they come with a map key, a legend. But today, we're going to see if we can recognise some of these symbols. Because the more we can recognise them, the easier it is to understand the information on the map. So I've got a map here. I've got a part of a map. This is a part of a map, that way. And I've got different lines in it. Let's look at the lines first, because they're different colour coded. Now, these colours are not on the road. If you were to drive down, you wouldn't see different bits of red lines everywhere and amber lines. But we've done this so you can understand what that line means. So we've got a big blue line up here. What do you think that blue line could be? A railway. A railway? I disagree. What else line could it be? A river. Could be a river, but rivers don't usually run in with nice neat lines with a gap in the middle, do they? A motorway? Could be a motorway. Let's look at that one in more detail. And I've got this red line here. And I've got an amber line there. In fact, I've got a yellow line over here. They must all mean different things. I've mean, got these dotted green lines. I've got some thin dotted green lines over here. And I've got some longer dotted green lines over here. And then I've also got a black line going through the centre of Batley with a red point on it. Let's investigate what those lines mean a bit close. And to help you that, I've got a diagram you can use. I've labelled some of these up. See if you can guess what they are first, and then click on the button to see if you're right. And you can click the little plus arrow to get more information. Have a go on your screen.
Keith, Keith Jenner. Look closely. Can you spot can, can you spot another example of this on that map? Anything you've never heard of before? Mm -hmm. Anything surprising? Have you seen one example of this? Can you see where it's on the map using that symbol again to show where it is? these on my board as well. So I'm going to start with this blue line here and that's a motorway. It's light blue but it's not a river. Rivers are slightly different colour and they're not usually quite as smooth lines as these. And if you look carefully you can see there's a black line in the middle. That's because it's a dual carriageway. There's a physical barrier on a motorway. Who's ever been on a motorway? There's a physical barrier isn't there between the traffic going one way and the traffic going the other way. And where there's a barrier, that changes it from a single carriageway road, where there's no barrier between the two lanes, to a dual carriageway. One carriageway is going one way, one carriageway is going another way. And you can see that because there is a dotted line, sorry, a thick, thin even, black line in the middle of the motorway to show that that's two carriages there. You can see it on this road down here. This is a dual carriageway, A road, and there's a line down the middle. You have to look very carefully. There's a line that we to show you that there's one carriageway going one way and one carriageway going another, going another way. There's another road here but it's thinner and there's no line in the middle. It's also the same colour. On this type of map, a, per, a pink road is a primary road, an A road, one of the main roads in our country. But then we have these orange roads. They're B roads, important roads, but not as important as uh, A roads. And they have numbers on You can see the numbers being written, B6124. So I can see after a glance at my map, which of the big roads, which handle the most traffic, which of the slightly smaller roads, are the now yellowy roads, are our minor roads. In fact, you can see some of the little white roads are live the little cul-de-sacs and streets where people might live on. So, have a think, would your street be a red road, would it be an amber road, would it be a yellow road, or would it be a small and white road? There's not much traffic on your street, like all the, all the houses down Norris Fork when we walk down to the church. All those houses would be white roads, because there's not much traffic on. But the road going on Norris Fork, no, no, Norris Fork Lane is a B road, so that would be orange. And then we've got some fun paths. Oops, there's our small roads. So these green dotted lines with short dots, I have our motorway for a second, they're just footpaths. Now there's no dotted mark on the land, and sometimes it's not, you can't even see it on the land at all. They are public rights of way. You've got a right to walk down that path any time of day or any day you want. If it's on a green dotted line on the map, you've got a right to walk down it. You've not got a right to walk over someone's, someone's plants no. or trample through some crops or disturb animals. But you've got a right to be on that footpath. You've also you've got that right if you are on foot. It's a footpath. So if you're on a bicycle, you can't go on a footpath. And you shouldn't be on a footpath on a bicycle. If you are on a horse, you shouldn't be on a footpath. But there are paths you can use or a cyclist, or a horse rider. And there are these longer paths down here. Can you see these longer dotted lines? That's a bridleway. A bridleway is suitable for cyclists and horses as well. So if it's a longer green path and it's marked bridleway, a bridleway means if you are a cyclist or a horse rider, you can use them as well. There are some special bridleways which are open to all traffic where small cars can go on. But most bridleways, if you've got a powered vehicle 
like a quad bike, that wouldn't be allowed on. There's only certain bridleways, and we're using that the little line across them. The last one I've looked at are these black lines, and the black line on all the survey map is a railway line. What do you think the red circle could be then? Sam? Yeah, a railway station. Red circle is our railway station. Let's see if we can double check those. Here are some cards. See if you can guess what's behind it and then click it to see if you're right. Off you go. Okay, so, Caden, what's this one here in the middle? A footpath. This one here, the blue line? Oh, a road. What type of road? A road. It's not an A road, good try. Motorway. It's a... A motorway. Which one of these would be an A road then? The one on the far right. The one on the far right? Yeah, this pink line, there's usually A roads. Orange ones are B roads and yellow ones are more minor roads. Sometimes we say C roads, but we don't usually use C roads very often. But no. actually, in, K in Kirklees County Office, there is a list of the roads and they're given C numbers. So there's lots of numbers with Cs, C2865. And mm. There's even D roads, and there's even E roads, and there's even roads which are called U for unclassified. So if someone's classified all the unclassified roads somewhere, that must have been a fun job. So what's this one here? Sienna. A, a railway line with a station. Yeah, a railway line with the station. So, I've got a footpath and a bridleway. Which one of these is oh. our footpath? It's uh, there's the one next to the motorway. Next to the motorway, we've got a footpath. And our bridleway is a longer route, is this one. Who can use a bridleway but can't use a footpath? Horse riders. Horse riders? Who else can use a bridleway but not a footpath? Cyclists. Cyclists, well done. Sometimes on a map, I'm just going to see if we've got one on here, I don't think we have, you will see a cycle route. They're usually shown, if it's a cycle route, it's usually shown either with a broken pen. What have I done to upset you today? <coughs> Why are you seeing such a thing with me, Mr. Bard? Thank you. It's either shown as orange circles, that would show a cycle lane, or sometimes it's shown with green circles. I usually coloured in. And a green circle also means it's a brighter way, so all the traffic can use it as well. So orange circles or green circles can sometimes show cycle points. Okay, so they're the road symbols. Let's look at some of the other ways land and other areas is shown. So, some key signs here. We've got different types of woodland. We've got this woodland. Can you see these trees? Look yes. quite thin. These are conifer trees. So coniferous trees. Put a lot of this. Very tall trees with leaves growing out. Don't look like our oak trees or our, our house chestnut trees. Ash trees. Go on. You got your hand up. Little tip. If your hand's up, I'm going to look at you to answer a question. These are our non coniferous trees. Can you see these look a bit different? Yeah. So on a map, you can tell what type of woodland you might be walking in. And that's really useful if you're lost. You can have a look at what's around you and say, oh, I'm in a woodland with coniferous trees. Let's look at that on the map. If you had both types of trees, what do you think the symbol would be? Would it be, so like, a few of them trees and a few of them trees in the same spot? Excellent. If it was both types of trees, you would draw some of these and some of these in the same area. The map makers 
the cartologist software for map makers would draw them in the same area to show you. A couple of other areas. This symbol shows me a quarry. Can you see the rock shape being dug out? Quarry is where land is dug out to take rocks. And you end often end up with these pools of water at the bottom and they look quite appealing, don't they? Yeah. As we get into the summer holidays, one of the things we need to remind you about is quarries are incredibly, incredibly dangerous places. People who work there have to do all sorts of checks first. Because they're really steep places, you don't know how deep that water is, how polluted it might be, how poisoned it could be, and they're often filled with lots of mud. So if you were to land in that water, you could be in very serious trouble. Quarries, although they look quite enticing, are definitely not playgrounds. So you should do your best to make sure you stay away from a quarry and follow all the signs, which is, I'm sure we'll all be doing about finding safe places to play over the summer. The last one, if you see this sign, it means it's a telephone. Uh, yeah, a public telephone. It's a telephone you can use. And if you're walking out, it's always best to have some change in your pocket. Because you never know when your mobile phone signal might go. And you may need to make a telephone call. Unfortunately, there's fewer and fewer telephone boxes now. Why do you think we've got fewer and fewer telephone boxes nowadays? Troy. Because there's more phones being built and they're um, SOS built into phones. Yeah, more people have mobile phones, so there's less and less need for them. But unfortunately, there's times when your mobile phone signal might drop out. Or if you've got a phone like mine, the battery decides to give up. So it's always worth being prepared. Let's look at some other symbols. So here are some initials. I've got some symbols next to them. So P-O, what do you think P-O could mean? If you see P-O in a map, what's it like it to be? Um, like, a, like a post thingy. A post thingy, that would be P-T, a post thingy. Post We've got a P-O. See Anna? A post office. A post office, that's how it like post office there. F-B. Uh, Try. FBI. It's not an FBI, look at the picture on the clue to help you. A footbridge. Do we get that right at home? A footbridge. It's a bridge you can use with your foot. This is really useful if you're out walking and you've got to cross the river. Look for the FB symbol. If you can't see an FB symbol, you might have to have a very good jump. I was out walking a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't a footbridge, it was some stepping stone if you look closely at the map, some small rocks you have to step over. So, what could SCH be? You got it right at home, have a good thing. Sam, it's a school. Our school there. And BS, you see lots of BS on maps. You see lots of BS symbols when out walking sometimes. Bridge stand. That's a good guess. Canaan? Bus station. Does that look like a bus station to you? <laughs> but you're right, bus stations do have a symbol. This is a boundary stone. And these date back to before we had maps. And if you were leaving one area and going to another area, how did he know without a map? Did you have to like put something on the boundary stone? And yeah. They would put stones down to let you know when he was leaving one area to another. We've been using boundary stones for thousands of years. The Romans on Hadrian's Wall marked off milestones. So you know when he was entering one mile to another. When you're out walking, you go to a different council area. There will often be a boundary fence or boundary stone. When you're driving on the motorway on the M62, the M62 goes from Hull. Does anyone know where, where it goes to? Leeds. It goes to Leeds, excellent. Do you know where it goes after Leeds? Man no. Yeah, go on. Manchester. Manchester and Liverpool. And we're in Yorkshire and Manchester's in Lancashire. And when if you drive down the motorway, look carefully, there is a huge boundary stone on the motorway and they've got, when you go into Lancashire, there is a flower painted. I don't know what flower it would be. Oh. Go on. Is it a dandelion? Not a dandelion, it's a good guess. Oh, it's Did it, it was done with Wars of the Roses, which we have looked at in year four. Oh, poppies. poppies. The Wars of the Roses, oh, roses. would usually be poppies. Cayman? Roses? Yes, what colour rose would it be for Lancashire? 
The red rose. Well, I don't see that. You see white rose and red rose to represent how a count is an awful lot. If you're a cricket fan, which we usually have our cricket fans sat here would have known it, the right ro rose is the uh, emblem of the Yorkshire cricket team. And the red rose is the emblem of the Lancaster cricket team. Leeds United, for many years, often had the white rose as one of their symbols. And what colour do Leeds play in? White. White, white. one of the most important teams in Yorkshire. The most important team in Lancashire is Manchester United. Yes. What colour do they play in? Red. 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 It's really important, the, the reds and the whites. It all dates back, we might do a history lesson about next week. So, we've got post offices, footbridges, schools, boundary stones. Let's see what... See what we remember. Some few other important symbols here. So, someone was mentioning this symbol earlier. Should be loading up on my map in a second. This here looks a bit like a train station, doesn't it? It's a bus station. So this symbol here shows us where a bus station is. Another really important symbol for you out is this triangle. They're shown on maps all the time. It's a special type of hotel or hostel. You shouldn't be. They are youth hostels. It's somewhere where you can stay, particularly if you're a walker, and you can find some cheap accommodation in a youth hostel. There's a very great youth hostel in York, which does packages for primary schools, just uh, in case anyone from high up is. But I, I promise them I'll give them a plug. What do you think this symbol means? Is it a sword maker? Does it mean grass? It doesn't mean grass. But there's only grass there usually. Castle. Perhaps there might have been a castle there. Castles usually have their own symbol. Would it be um, fields? What might have happened on these fields? <gasps> Look at the symbol. What might have happened on these fields? Family. <gasps> Could uh, he both um, fight? What do we call it when there's been a fight? A war. If it's a small, small than a war, wars have lots of these beginning with B. Yeah, these are battlefields. This shows you that a battle has taken place on this field. There's quite a few around by us. If you go walk around Oakwell, if you go up towards Drigginton, you'll see battles up there. The battlefield of Drigginton Moor, which is an important site for the Rapids and the Cavaliers. If you go walk into Wakefield, there's Sandal Castle there near Pugnets. And Sandal Castle was another important battle in the English Civil War. Again, we might be looking at that later. So we've got our bus station, we've got our youth hostel, we've got our battle, and then we have two crosses. And a cross isn't just a church, it's a place of worship. But if we see a square, it tells us it's a, it's a place of worship with what type of feature? Graves. Not showing us the graves. What, how is this place of worship different from this place of worship? Look <gasps> at the square shape. A graveyard. Well, graves wasn't right, graveyards are going to be less right, I'm afraid. Look at the shape of the square. Um, because, because the little that's a square and that Yes, excellent. Look at the roof. This is a tower shape, isn't it? Yeah. If you see a square, it's telling you that's a church or a place of worship with a tower. If it's a circle, think about the bottom of that. It's the bottom of a cone shape, isn't it? So that's a spire. Can also mean a minuet or a dome can be shown with this symbol. But often if it's a mosque which has a minuet and a, or sometimes a dome, usually the map writer will write mosque on, on the map to make it really clear. If it's, but if it's got a square, it's telling you expect to see something square. And again, if you're lost and you see a place of worship and it's got a square tower, you know where that's a map you should be. So. There's some symbols there. Let's have another flip out, see what you can remember.
Okay. Right. See what we remembered. I'm going to use my class helpers to help me. FB. Footbridge. Footbridge. Uh, this one here. So you remember that from the beginning? Sam? A road. A road. Well remembered. This one here, please. I'm pointing at. Caden? Um, uh, um. Sienna, can you help us out? A railway station. Railway station and railway line, yeah. Uh, this one here, a triangle. A youth hostel. A youth hostel, well done. Oh, I can move these cards around, look at that. Clever steps. This one here looks like a bit like a railway station sign, Canaan. Bus station. Bus station. Go on to the tricky ones now. This longer green one here. A bride away. This woodland here. Is it um, a coniferous wood? Nearly coniferous, yeah. Oh. Woodland full of conifers, let's call it that. And we said woodland not full of conifers, non coniferous. So, which one of these is a place of worship with a tower? The square or the circle? Oh. A square. A square. So the circle one's got a. A cone. So what do we call a cone shape? You're exactly right. I've got a posh name. It could be a dome, yeah. It could be a dome or minuet, or often it's a... A W. No. Not usually got a W in it. Is it a spire? Spire. That W means with. Because I didn't have enough room to write with. Well done. Okay, a couple more symbols that you know about. If it's a blue symbol, it's usually information for tourists. Canaan. Does that P stand for parking? It does. The P is for parking. I've not put all the symbols on. Not Mrs. Parking, obviously. Oh, does that mean for vehicle? Not vehicle. What do you think this symbol might mean here? Construction. Have a look at what's there. A tent. There's a tent, and what do you think this could be? A caravan. Yeah, so it's a caravan site. Yes. If you see the tent of its own, it's just a camping site. What about this M in a very impressive building? What do you think the M stands for, Caden? Mosque. Not a mosque, it's a good guess. Museum. Museum. Yes. And the V is a place visitors might want to know. It's a visitor's centre. So it's the centre for the visitors to give them some guidance about, about what a place is like. If you go to somewhere really important, like if you went to Hadrian's Wall, or if you went to Stonehenge, oh. you'll be, there'll be a visitor centre there. A couple of other places here. This semicircle place here is showing you where you can get a good view. It's a viewpoint. I've chosen the view, one of my favourite views, of the Vale of York. This is a view from somewhere called Sutton Bank. It's a beautiful viewpoint. You can see all across some of the best parts of Yorkshire. What do you think of this place here? A man with no feet and it was lost his head. Just seems to be a giant ball. Dewsbury swimming. Do we all mean Dewsbury swimming baths? So what do you think it means, that symbol? Could be swim baths, what else could it be? They not just have swimming at Jewish Billy uh, Leisure Centre. Um, like gyms? Yeah, gym sports centres. This is usually a place where you can do some exercise inside. What about the duck with no legs? <laughs> what might that be? A pond. Could be a pond. So it's usually a special type of pond because ponds are usually shown on the map with some blue water. A lake. Could be a lake, but lakes usually show on the map as well. Oh. Why might they show them a duck there? What, spe what might this place be? There's not many humans there, and any humans there have to behave. It's a place for wildlife. What do we call those places for wildlife? Canaan. Well, I don't really know the name, but will there be ducks there? There may be ducks there, there may be <laughs> other protected animals there. Zoos? Not a zoo, I it's a nature reserve. No. So these are nature reserves. So they map to show you places where your animals are free <coughs> to live without human interference. Sometimes humans can go and see them, but only from a distance. 
I want to think this could be some sort of table. What might you be able to do there? Is it like a restaurant? Like a restaurant, but it's outside and you have to bring your own food. <gasps> like sausage rolls, you might bring a blanket. Is it like a park? Because you can like barbecue. You can have a picnic. It's a picnic spot. It's a place where you can have a nice picnic. Oh. Okay. Some great work there. I've got a couple more symbols for you. So this is just whiteness. Uh, On my map, hopefully it's coming up in yours. White areas vibrate are fields. If there's a big white area on the map, it's usually a field. Why don't we paint all the fields green? Because some of the roads are green. Some of the roads are green. Why else? Why don't we just make green of the field and spend a lot spend all that time colouring all the field? And cost a lot of money as well. It's easy if most of the land is white to leave if most of the land is field to leave that blank. Okay, I've got a map here. Your last little task, and I might leave this after we've finished our video. I want you to see what you can find me on this map and annotate it for me, please. So, I can see, don't forget to use the A2 for your writing. I can see on here in Keswick, there's this M symbol. It's not where the M is, it's where the line is there. What would that M be? Oh. Wouldn't it be a dog? Wait, the M? Oh, I was in museum. Well, say that then. Museum. museum. Oh, I didn't know. My favourite place, Keswick. I'm going to say I think I quite like Keswick. What would, last one I'm going to do for you, what would this red road be? What type of road would that be, Canaan? Um, is it a road? It is a road. What type of road? An A road or a B road? A road. Oh, you mean, it's not a road, it's an A road. Road. That's quite tricky, isn't it? There's lots of other symbols on here for you to find. Your job to do, I'm going to leave this open all the lunchtime. Can you annotate as many places as you want? I'm going to be taking some screenshots for best ones for going up on the blogs. I can see A roads, B roads, footpaths, recreational routes. I'll leave it so you can go back and look at the symbols as well. I can see campsites, parking, I wonder what this symbol might mean. It's a brand new symbol, I've only put my maps in the last couple of years. I can see this symbol down here. I can see a long green path, what might they be? I can see orange paths, what do they say those might be? I can see P's, I can see a triangle, FB, PO. I've picked this map, there's all sorts on here. I'll leave you over lunch time to do this. You've gotten to 1.15. Maybe we're both coming back might have a bit longer. At 1.15, I'm going to stop this map, and I'll be showing sure whoever's got the most done. So I'll let you start it now. I'm going to finish our video and see what you can come up with. So I'll let you pose in the classroom. You want to go for your lunch, but don't worry, I'll leave it open. Remember, you can look forward and backward if you need any clues. There's some different symbols up there as well. I'll see what you can come up with, what ideas you have. Who can annotate me the best map, please? Ready? I'll let you make a start, off you go. And we will see you this afternoon, hopefully, for our music lesson. Bye bye for now.